Hi. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are, are you, you doing? Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, oh, good. So great to see you. Oh, you too. You too. <laughs> Let me do a little introduction. Okay. Uh, Lisa speaks about the simplicity of life here as this, as what is happening. It is life being itself in every as respect. <laughs> it does not need to be found or realized as it already is. She has a couple of great books. One of them I really, really love. Um, the other one um, is really great as well. Um, I can't remember the title of the book, Lisa. What's the title of the book again? No uh, one I think is... it's called Nothing Happening. <laughs> Nothing Happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one I love. <laughs> and then the other one, <laughs> I should be more prepared by this, but I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's okay. I don't even have a copy of that book myself. So, you know, I... <laughs> uh, how have you been doing? I'm good. Yeah, yeah, really good. That's good. Yeah, life's, you know, as it is. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that this goes is we're going to um, ask you to do an introduction um, yeah. to, to the presentation. And then we're going to have some, some um, question Q&A uh, okay. happening. And um, I'm going to read them for you and then um, you can answer and we'll just have a chat we'll just have fun this is not okay. a nothing is serious uh no nothing is definitely not serious <laughs> yeah. it's too serious grateful. is trouble <laughs> oh i know but serious happens and that's okay too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh ladies and everyone everyone and no one uh lisa lennon okay thank you Okay, so uh, thank you for having me and thank you for joining. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is the most simple thing. It's just the most simple thing and that it's just here. And that doesn't need to be discovered through anything happening. Because I think what happens is we, we get a sense of it of that, yes, we know this is here, but I need to understand that and I need to get to a place where that becomes some kind of reality. But the thing is, is that kind of feeling of life, whatever that is, without rules, without doctrine, what we do is we try to like pin that down because we live in this very sort of logical left brain where everything has to be known. We have to pin it all down. And we think there's a line, well, we don't always think, but there's a tendency to think that there's a line to be crossed, that this thing is going to happen to me, that I'm going to see it. But the thing is, is that it already is. The, the seeing of it, it, it is. You, you can't see it because you are it. You can't see it because it is it, regardless of feeling like a somebody, a nobody, or a neither. I don't regard myself as a nobody, a somebody, or a neither. I'm just here, whatever that means. And the tendency as well is to make rules, like there's going to be a line to be crossed. There is no line. Can you find a line? Where is that line? It usually appears in the conceptual idea that I'm going to cross the line. But there isn't actually a line, because this never moves. It's never moved, and you can see that in your own experience. It's never been anything else than what is. And then we get all these ideas like, oh, it's hopeless, it's hopeless. And that idea of hopeless means it's hopeless because I'm never gonna get there because there's no cause and effect. Well, how about there being neither cause or, or no cause? <laughs> how about there being a me or a no me or neither? Because life is spontaneously happening here, right here. And if it's spontaneously happening as I feel like me, then that's what is. We judge that as a right or a wrong, and then we feel like we have to go down all these paths, or we have to be hopeless, or we have to be nihilistic, or we have to like stare at the room long enough till eventually it reveal, it, reveal itself. But ironically, it's already revealed itself as the room and the wonderful thing about life 
is that there is no rules. We get all these spiritual rules like, oh, well, you know, now I'm into non-duality. I can't read tarot cards anymore. Well, life, <laughs> life is that. Life is that. You know, we beat ourselves up for reading a tarot card or looking at astrology or meditating. But it doesn't matter because life is that. Life is everything. Life is every speck of dust, every thought, every feeling, every situation, everything that is, just is, simply, simply. But for some reason, we think it's not. Oh, it's my phone doing a thing. Hang on. We're looking for this. When <laughs> looking for this is this. We're looking for this when it's clearly here as everything, regardless of feeling like there's a me or a no me. These are rules that we, that we, that get hardened in us. And then we get judgment. Oh, they're a bit of a me or they're, they're a no me. And we put people on high and we put people down low when life is everything. Cats, dogs, people, doesn't matter. Beautiful. It's beautiful. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty. And it's a beauty that can't be understood. It's a beauty that can be sometimes sensed. But we think that's a thing. Then we have to go and get, grab it. Then we have to go and like follow some path to it. But the beauty is the beauty. It's unknowable. It's untouchable. We can't find it because it is it. This is it. So we get these ideas that there is willpower or no willpower, depending on what side of the fence you're on. <laughs> you know? Well, how about neither or either? It's just spontaneously being itself. It's spontaneously being this body moving its arms around and saying stuff. And it's not gonna get anyone anywhere. We're never going to get anywhere. Sure, everything changes and moves all the time. A few years ago, I was talking in a different way, and now I'm talking in this way. But nothing's actually moved. <laughs> it's still the same. There might have been one idea there, and now there's this one. And that's sovereignty, you see, sovereignty. To see life for yourself just as it is. You don't need to be told how to find life because you are life. Unless you want to, of course. <laughs> There's no rules. You can like go for it, you know, sit in a cave for 20 years. But it'll still be life. Nobody can tell you if you're a me or a no me. These things don't apply, do they? They're not really. When life is spontaneously being everything. Walls, floors, sky, feelings, mad imagination. The whole of human experience. Like, almost like exploding every moment. <laughs> it's free. It's free. Everything is free already. You could say that you are free already. Even if, even if this thought, I'm not free, that's free. Just poof, I'm not free. Oh, I feel suffering, I'm not free. <laughs> okay, I've been going 10 minutes. I like getting questions and comments. It doesn't have to be a question, it could be a comment. I don't really mind. It's just nice to have, you know, the uh, interaction. For sure, for sure, uh, Lisa, that was brilliant. Thank you, I really like that. You. Yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> um, Travis goes, Thank you, Lisa. After awakening, there, was, there has been a loss in motivation. The body has gained weight. It does feel free. It does feel free simultaneously. Yeah, well, that's, that's that expression. I mean, is, is that a problem? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a problem. <laughs> Sometimes that can happen. 
Yeah, I mean, I can lose motivation for no reason whatsoever, but it's, it's just as, as it is. You can just go with it. It doesn't really matter. Unless it's a problem. But I don't know the solution to those things. I mean, I guess, I guess you could say, you know, when, when you realize that, holy shit, there's no line. That's what was realized here. There's no line. There's no divide between being asleep and being awake. Not really. What the, it's ironically seen that it's all everything, regardless, regardless. And I guess what that can do is that can knock the system a bit. It can just knock the system a bit. Yeah, what happened here? I guess I felt a lack of motivation and it just ended, it just finished. It just finished on its own. So I wouldn't worry, it'd be all right. <laughs> There's a comment here from GS, love your way to share. Thank you, GS. <laughs> Uh, I have another, uh, to, to add to that one, uh, Lisa, um, can you tell me the difference of the way that you shared before and the, the way that you share now? Before, it was more to do with the idea that there is a self that needs to fall away. But what was realized later was that there is no self to fall away, that there is actually no line. There's no line dividing life i mean it's it's right here where's the dividing line between this moment and now this moment there isn't one it's so it's so vast that that we can't get hold of that we can't get hold of it we can only see it um in the sort of brain made idea of time so we live in the brain made idea of time where there was a me and then there was a no me. Well, I would say that neither apply here. There is neither. It's, it's irrelevant. Because when you think of a me or a no me, you're, you're, you, what happens is you can get into like conceptual thinking, making this whole story about a me and a no me. Well, what about neither? What about it's just here, whatever that is, without... Because what can happen, then we can judge, oh, that was the me, or that was the no me. And then we start dividing everything up when everything is just life. It's just this explosion of life in whatever regard. Brilliant. <laughs> There's a quiz for you here, Lisa. From quiz? S from, from Sid. Hi, Lisa. Playful quiz. Your two favorite musicians who celebrate awakened self, your two favorite living expression of self-realization, and your tube who's, who you enjoy watching and recommend. Thanks. <laughs> so the, the first, first two, two music? favorite musicians who celebrate awakened self. Cool. Oh, that's a very <laughs> subjective question, isn't it? I like modern classical music, but I also like um, 80s post-punk new wave music. So there's two. <laughs> I, I like that too. We should share a playlist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the next two things? The next one is your two favorite living expressions of self-realizations. Living expressions of self-realization. Oh, like people. I think so. Is that right, Sid? I can't answer it. Oh, okay, let me, re let me repeat that. Your, okay. I just got like a, uh, an added thing to that. Your two favorite living expressions of self-realization on your YouTube, who you enjoy watching and recommend. <sighs> I can't say because I don't operate like that. For me, it's more, well, whoever you resonate with, I can't really say because everybody is so individual. Like somebody might go to somebody who's really super spiritual 
I'm really talking about, you know, vibration and energies and everything. And then someone might go to somebody who's just like, nah, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. I've enjoyed many speakers over the time that I've been listening. I actually wasn't into non-duality when things started happening to me. <laughs> I was into Barry Long, of all people. I really used to love going to see Tony. I really enjoyed seeing Richard. For different reasons. I've seen a lot of people, I can't really say because it's, then I would be giving a recommendation. What would happen here? Okay, this is important. What I'd be ha happening here, I'd be recommending someone who I thought was possibly more awakened than somebody else. And well, the thing is, is that nobody's more awakened than anybody else because everybody is a flower in the garden. Everybody's a flower in the garden. Everyone's a tree in the forest. So in that way, I can't say, because, but in my speaking now, it's not to do with people getting to somewhere where someone is awakened. Because it's not that, because there is no one somewhere who's awakened. There's only here, only here, right here, looking at your lovely face. That's it. There's nothing else. But I would definitely go, go, go with who you, who makes your heart sing. Not makes you feel shit. There we go. Sorry, my light is swear. Yeah. Fuck yes. <laughs> and what was the last question? <laughs> I think that's it. That's it. Oh, is that you, it? Okay. I think that's okay. it. I know that was a bit Sorry, of a said, let me just, uh, yeah, that's it. It's two questions. Favorite musicians and your favorite living expressions that you recommend. Favorite musicians. Oh, God, I can't smell. Yeah, the favorite musicians are so difficult. I love Kate Bush because I've, I've listened to Kate Bush since I was a child. There's people I've listened to since I was a child. And I still listen to them. Yeah. Hounds of Love. Hounds of Love. Love Hounds of Love, especially the other side. When there was another side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're showing our age. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. B side of Hands of Love, yeah. <laughs> um, there's another question here. Um, the other one is Is it your experience? This is from Isa. Is it your experience that the thoughts about, about me do not appear anymore as the story of me disentangles? I want to repeat that. Yeah, no, I hear it. There'll be thoughts appearing like, oh, I should really go shopping. Or, oh, I'm going to paint today. Oh, I feel like going on a dance. These are all the things that I do. But there's no thought of, I'm not there yet. I need to change. I need to get somewhere. Why am I still here? Those thoughts don't appear. No. No. Because they're not they don't mean anything they just don't mean anything unless we make them mean something yeah that's just simply life that's just simply so imagine sitting there and you've got no thought of me or no me what would you be doing you'd just be doing right <laughs> or not doing without those thoughts happening just simply that yeah Brilliant. Thank you. This one is from GS. I have been listening to non-duality pointings for a while. And being that I have been always involved in healing, now I feel that it is strange or even not make sense to keep on doing the healing work. Can you comment, please? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any rules to this expression of life. To me, there's no rules. I mean, what I would I would ask, why are you stopping to do it? Because it's a, I'm not, this is not what I'm saying, what that person's thinking. It's more to do with, ask yourself the question, am I not doing the healing because I don't enjoy it anymore? Or am I not doing the healing because it doesn't fit in with the dogma? 
because what happens is that we can suppress things. I've met so many people over the time I've been speaking, I've gone like, oh, I've gone back to doing counseling. Oh, I've gone back to doing healing. There's some people who do healing. They've gone back to it because they felt like it was suppressed in them because it wasn't fitting a narrative which we can create when following a certain path. So I would just ask those questions for oneself, really. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, this is from Anonymous um, with the phone number. I don't know who is controlling life, but I could hardly deal with the outcome. Any advice? Could you read that again, please? Yeah. I don't know who is controlling life, but I could hardly deal with the outcome. Any advice? Advice. I don't give advice, but I can try. <laughs> advice is not my speciality. I don't know who's controlling life. I don't know if there is a controller. I would say there's an intelligence behind it all. I mean, there has to be an intelligence behind this water, right? Behind this sky and stars. And advice for not dealing with the outcome? I can't, I can't say. I can't say I'm sorry. Yeah. Because then we get into more like psychological stuff with that. Thank you. This is from an anonymous attendee, Lisa. I recently discovered your YouTube channel and have found you one of my favorite speakers regarding this message. Do you still have expectations of people in your life on a personal level? First question, like from romantic relationships or from family. I've found that expectations, even subtle, can chip away at the beauty of these relationships. Is it possible to not have any expectations in relationships and friendships? Does this expectation disappear along with the self? Thanks. I would say that um, for me, that my life just runs more smoothly. I don't really have expectations. I don't have, um, I don't expect someone to be a certain way. But if someone's a certain way that I don't enjoy, I just, I just move away from it or I deal with it. But I don't expect people to be a certain way for me. I'll just deal with things as they come along. Um, but I know what you mean, the expectation. Not really, no, no. I don't really think about it. If someone pisses me off, I either tell them or I'll move away, or I'll deal with it in some way. But that's it, really. Um, it's more like a more like a flow. That I used to have terrible expectations, but they were very um, to do with wanting acknowledgement, to do with wanting to be loved, to be want to be good enough. All these feelings that I used to have, which I used to find very crippling, that the expectations would really come from that. For me personally, I can't say for anybody else. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Susan uh, asks, it seems like here is not taking care of earth and one another. How can and how can we change that? How come? How come? And how can we change that? So here is not taking care. Did, does she mean like the way we're like, burning forests and stuff like that. I yeah, that's what she not needs. taking care of each other, taking yeah. care of the earth and one another, basically. <laughs> I'm going to quote a poem that uh, Barry Long wrote. Okay. I'm going to quote it badly because I haven't read it for like many, many years. Wild, wild life. Fires crashing through men's lovely gardens, the sizzling, crackling flesh of furry running things. Hear you not my symphony? Shazam. And with that, you know, with, with, that, with, <laughs> that, with that, we can feel all the pain and sorrow and, and all that stuff that goes along with it, but that's the symphony. That's the symphony. 
And if we want to help heal the earth, then we just have to go out of the door and do something, don't we? Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Ed has a question. Does entering into the non-dual state cause a loss of motivation to change the world and right injustice? There is no non-dual state. There is only life happening. There is no non-dual state because that would imply that there is something different from what is. So if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not in a non-dual state, you actually are. <laughs> <laughs> because life, this life, whatever you want to call it, I just say life because it's the most innocuous word I can find. This life can appear as all those things. So what was the next part? Um, just not, motivate, <laughs> not motivated, something about not but, motivated. Yeah. Motivation to change the world and right injustice. There can be that motivation there. There's just life happening and that either that motivation is there or it's not. It's got nothing to do with states. Yeah. Beautiful. Mark goes, I understand that there is no one to get, her, get or get rid of anything. I understand that there's only this, which includes everything, and yet the penny has not dropped. There's only what is. Yes. Yeah, the penny is not going to drop because you, you're putting the penny in the next moment. The penny is always dropping. It's being floors and walls and computers and sounds and feelings and light and all those things. The thought, the penny's not dropped. Sure, you can understand there's only this, but that's just this appearing is only understanding it. It's so impossible to pick the whole of everything apart and put it into put it into things. And what we do is wait, the penny hasn't dropped, then we're gonna have a load of thoughts thinking, well, I'm not there yet, I'm not good enough, I'm not life. I'm not where that person is over there. I want to be where they are. Well, they're not anywhere, they're not even in your in the room with you. <laughs> GSS, is it like, it is like it does not make sense in any way. And on the other hand, also I can see that it is all that is that eventually emerges. The healings, talking about the healings. This is the, pers the person that asked about the healing earlier. Right. Can you read it again? Sorry. Now I know sure. the subject. Yeah. It is like it does not make sense in any way. And on the other hand, also, I can see that it is all that is that eventually emerges. It's always emerging. So it doesn't matter with this emergent life, this burgeoning emergent life, whether there's healing or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you want to heal, go and heal. Don't worry about dogma. <laughs> it's not going to get you anywhere. You might as well just do what you love. Travis goes, your communication is really clear in its simplicity. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Have you gotten 4G or, you know, 4K? <laughs> You're really clear. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I'm in Spain. We've got the worst internet ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still really clear. <laughs> Life is really clear. <laughs> and you know what? Yes, I think that's yes. point because life is so clear that we're looking for it to be clear. It's so ironic. We're waiting for something to happen, for the penny to drop, for the me to fall away. For I remember, do you ever remember a time when you were looking for the self? And then we're now on a time where I'm trying to get rid of the self. I remember in my 20s, I was desperately looking for the <laughs> self. Yeah, I put the self up there on the pedestal. And then suddenly the self is a problem, better take it off, you know. And, it just, <laughs> and it's just ironic because it, life is too simple. It's too simple. That's the beauty. Virginia asks, 
how does the falling away of me and the self affect relationships with others in your life? There is no falling away of the me. It's like saying that I had a bath yesterday and now there's no bath. It's just what is. And relationships are what they are. They're just what they are. This is, you know, I come across it time. This is not a criticism or a judgment. I completely understand it, that we're looking for the end of something and all the time missing that we are everything. We are everything. It doesn't matter whether there's a sense of me or no me. It just doesn't matter. Are we, how are we doing for time here? Okay. Relationships are relationships, wherever you are. Virginia asks, how can a non-duality view of the world change someone's life? Yeah, non-duality view of the world. There's just the view of the world. Because here we are. There is no non-duality view of the world. There's just the people I'm speaking to. You're there in your room as everything. The view of the world is everything already, just as it is, like a, like a zillion piece jigsaw all fitting together every moment. Never a piece out of place. It's always this perfected, absolute place here. The view of the world is this <laughs> mark goes great thanks lisa and then art goes your expression is very beautiful lisa thank you for sharing that's thank art. you so much thank you so much uh there's this one what do you think do you think that once we understand or experience non-duality, we become more loving individuals, more compassionate with ourselves or with others? Is that your own experience? No, no, because <laughs> there's just here. There's just here. And I know that's just too like, yeah, but what, 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 what? I need to see that. But the, what the hindrance is, is trying to see it. I'm more, I guess I'm more loving and more patient because I'm just maybe older. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say. Oh, this one from Monica. What about when your daughter dies? Is it beauty? Ah, uh, my daughter. It's something I think about actually sometimes. And the more the, the more I think about it, the more I see that it will be beauty and pain. Because I love her. She's like my angel. But I know that the love I have for her, that's always, that's always. So there'll be both. If it, you know, I, we made a deal. I made a deal with my daughter. I said, you're not allowed to die first. <laughs> I gotta go first. <laughs> You got the dibs on that one, right? <laughs> I got the dibs. I'm dead first. Yeah. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pinch no returns. Yeah. But you know, it's like, like being a parent or being, having a partner or just loving what you love. It's always going to be painful when, when you lose, when that physical thing, that physical love goes out of your life. It's going to be painful. It's just going to be painful. Thank you for sharing that one, Lisa. Um, anonymous attendee asks, is it possible 
to not like yourself in what is when there is no self? Don't like yourself. I don't have those notions. Sometimes I'll say to myself, oh God, you're a bit of a dick there. <laughs> but, but I'm not like myself. No, there's just, there's just always this moment to moment thing. Uh, it's not to do with having a self or no self. It's more like we're talking about relationships. It's like things will be dealt with as they go along. I, I don't have this constant notion of a self that is constantly measured because these measurements, they, they, they're always referring to another measurement. What we do is we have an idea of self and we measure it against everything. That measurement is not there. There's, um, you know, there's neither better nor worse. The same with others, there's no better or worse people. There are people that repel me and people attract me and people who are neutral. That's that. Thank you. Uh, Travis asks, do you ever feel lonely? Your communication resonates wonderfully here. It does, however, feel like I have suppressed this recognition around others. It just doesn't feel that common, especially in the military. Does your website and work help in feeling more connected? The others are all a beautiful expression of life, no matter what they do. No matter how much of an idiot they are. <laughs> no matter, even if you're completely repelled by them, they're neither more nor less. Because how can they be? How can they be? Is it possible for someone to be more or less awakened when everything is the one expression? And what was the other thing? Oh, my, my website, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know if it helps. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, it has helped some people. Some people, have, um, some people have come to my talks have really relaxed because they're not trying to find the end of me. That happens a lot in my talks. That, that pressure is off. <laughs> There's a question here from Anonymous. If there's no falling away of the me, then what is the difference between how the world is perceived through my eyes as opposed to how it is seen through first? Okay, I'm gonna get a bit woo-woo here. The world that's perceived through your eyes is the only world. You can only imagine my eyes and how I perceive it. That's the best you could do with that. You can only imagine someone else's perception. The only place there is, is here. I don't mean my here. <laughs> my here is my here. Your here is the only here there is. This here for me is the only here there is. There is no other here for me. Thank you, that's clear. Um, thank you, Lisa, for your open and clear speech. Beautiful, um, beautiful. Uh, oh, oh, you're gonna have to go uh, again. You've broken up, you've broken up, Emerson. Body dies. Sorry, you broke up there. Can you, can you repeat that, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. What do you think happens after the body dies? What do you think happens when the body dies? I have no idea, but I don't ever remember being dead. <laughs> I know that's a bit of a, a bit of an answer, but can, is there ever ever been anything other? Anything other? ever. Do you ever remember not being? 
do you remember do you do you have a, a memory of you're going to be or you you have been have you ever re never remembered not being i'm just going to leave it at that this is from mark perhaps the last question oh i just read it uh <laughs> To not like yourself when there is no self is asking in the absence, absences of a me. Can a feeling like this like have a moment? Do you get that? Do you want me to read it again? Yeah, I don't really understand. Yeah, per, uh, perhaps the last question, to not, to not like yourself when there is no self is asking if in the absences of a me, can a feeling like this like have a moment? There is neither a me or a no me. There's just what is. There is just what is. There's no other. So asking that question is just everything being that question. It's, it's too, it's too... It's too immediate. Everything's so immediate. For me, there's neither a self or no self. Mosquitoes. Neither self or no self. There's just sitting here. I never think of myself as a no self. And I don't think of myself as a self. I just say I'm sitting here. And there's the experience of this body, of the space. Neither really matter to me. Neither matter. So I don't have those thoughts of not liking myself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Monica asks, if someone dies close to you, can there be a sense of not more, no more life for you? And it really, I'm just reading it. Can there be a sense or not more live for you is what it's written down if someone dies close to you can there be a sense of uh no more life for you or something i can't i'm, no I'm just reading it me. as so. yeah or if you can explain further monica if you can write more um yeah i don't really understand yeah um just a second here I do want to. So I do want to say something. I know we've only got two minutes, but I just want to say something that I think is important. That me speaking like this isn't about me, because you people are there listening to a voice coming through their computer, and what I'm really talking about is just here. In my experience of life. As I said in a talk last, last week, I said, I'm not going to talk about my experience of life because I don't have any wisdom to offer <laughs> from my experiences because they don't matter, because they're just stories. They're just stories. There's just what, he, what is here for you. You know, the, the, the problem can be is that we hold people who've gone through something and now they're at a point where I want to get to. Well, the only point is here. There's only this one point where everything happens. We actually have more, more, more questions, uh, Lisa, but we're actually on for another 15 minutes. So we still have time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I, I thought it was... Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, you started 9.45, or in my time. Yeah. But, but uh, Mark has a, a funny question here. Uh, okay. But, but the mosquito mattered, and it seemed as if it bothered you. So you're saying annoyance can be and not be? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I just, this, I just, I just, I, I just respond. Because that question implies there's a special way of being. When life is not special or not all, all special. It's either all special or nothing is special. 
Of course, I must, you know, if a rabid dog came running into my house now, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, well, there's only just what's happening and it's all fine. Of course not. I'm going to get up and I'm going to lock myself in the bathroom. Because I'm just a regular human being. See, the, the, the implication is, is that there's a, there's a special state that someone gets to where they're now, they, they're more like a lamppost rather than a human being. I'm not going to allow a, a mosquito to land on my face and drink my blood while I'm on a live broadcast. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bat it out the way. <laughs> Are you not one with the mosquito? <laughs> not today. Not today. <laughs> 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 let's talk about your art i really like your art i've been following you on instagram oh, what is you. the yeah you guys should do you have a do you have a website is it on your website your art as well yes 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 there's a tab for my art yeah with my website on it yeah can you talk more about your art just i, I mesmerized by it because it's so awesome tell me your process lisa <laughs> process but behind the images yeah it's beautiful I know it's just what comes up, but... It just really is just what comes up. It's like someone who plays a guitar and they suddenly come up with a tune and like, oh, and suddenly you've got a song. Yeah. Yeah, I, like just get to, I just get to fulfill my fantasies through my, through my art somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Beautiful. I really like them. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do you do commission work for people as well or... Yeah, yeah, mainly commissions actually. Yeah, I give them and sort of portraits that are just a little bit sublime, a little bit surreal and sublime. Yeah. There's a question that came in. Uh, Susan uh, asked, "Can you speak of living from your heart versus the mind?" I mainly live from my heart. I don't really live from my mind very much. <laughs> It depends what you mean by mind. If you mean the linear thinking, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I've got to be better, I've got to be this, I've got to be that, which is always in relation to what normally has been read or heard or what has been exposed to. I do, I do have a lot of thoughts. I live in, well, art world. <laughs> And I love things like metaphysics and stars and all those sorts of things. But I don't um, live in measurements or judgments to do with this body, to do with myself. So it doesn't really matter. But I do live in my heart a lot. Yeah, yeah. Someone made a comment here anonymously love this lady oh thank you anonymous person <laughs> <laughs> i really like this that you wrote down uh, whether or not the people can relate to the non-dual speaker is not the point a biography wouldn't be true and there wouldn't be any integrity in it it's not important it's not relevant to the message no for me no no i mean some of the some people other people might feel differently about that. But for me, it's more like just the absolute wonder that this is all there is. I don't mean like this is all there is as in the four walls and the floor, whatever's happening. And I include anything in that, you know, because people write to me and they say, oh, you know, I used to see like angels and things that doesn't really match up. I'm just like, whatever whatever it doesn't make any difference there's no right and wrong to how this can appear how it can be and so it's got nothing to do with me Beautiful. because my Thank story you. my experience would be would be related as something special when it's not it's not true because there's nothing special in a story not in the end. 
just a bit of entertainment that's all <laughs> what is the living from the heart is it important mind what is it important mind or heart it doesn't matter it's all the one system Would you like to be able to speak about marriage and romantic relationships and how that relates to non-duality? I'm getting pressured to get to getting married here. I thought someone was proposing to you, but uh, I'll repeat the question. <laughs> no, not here, no. <laughs> would, would you be able to speak about marriage and romantic relationships and how that relates to non-duality? I am getting pressured to get married, to getting married. Um, I'll just say do it well. Do what you want. It doesn't, no, no, doing what you want doesn't relate to non-duality because there is no non-duality. There's just being here with all the decisions and things we have to make, with all the things we have to do, deal with. There is no rules to that. They just, it just is what it is. So in terms of getting married, uh, I have no advice for that. I would just say, do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, uh, Mark. Lisa, you're more important to me than the message that is special, no matter the story. I guess, yes, I'm entertained with you. So one system or not, I love you. Oh, Mark. that's really sweet. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> that's more like a sort of a dynamic between people, isn't it? Well, I, I, I'm all in for dynamics between people. But what, what I'm trying to say is that my story is not it. There's only what is. There's only it. There's only it. There is no special it. There is no line that's crossed. This is from Anonymous. So is the story of someone, someone's alien abduction and the story of evolution equally true? What is the difference between these two? Um, well, yeah, if they're equally true to who's been abducted, they're true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I, you know, I could never say what's true for somebody else. Because that's, that's their universe, as you, could, as you would say. So yeah, it, you know, life can be anything, alien abduction, ghosts, whatever, whatever. There's nothing untrue. And there's nothing true. That's just what is. What do you think of law, the law of attraction by Anonymous? Law of attraction? Um, I don't really think anything. I don't think there's anything right or wrong in it. I say, good luck. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Try and manifest that million dollars. <laughs> Share. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just give me, throw me a hundred bucks and we're done. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 um. I'm going to, to, to quote you again here. Nothing ended and nothing started. This is this is the discovery. Sorry, you're going to have to say that again. You, you turned into a robot. <laughs> uh, nothing ended and nothing started. This, if you want to give it a word, is the realization. This is the discovery. Yeah. Yeah, nothing ended, nothing started. I mean, really, when you come down to it, can you find a beginning? Can you find an end? Or do we have to go into concepts? I'm not saying that there wasn't a beginning or there wasn't an end, but I can't find either of them. I'm not saying there is time and there is no time, because it depends on your universe, as it were. You know, it is, it's all so, as itself, it's all so perfect. What you want is a good philosophy, but what do you think about people who do harm to others in this world? 
Uh, like every other human being, I would like them to stop. Yeah. Anonymous, if you believe something to be true, like law of attraction, as was mentioned, does it make more true for the believer? In other words, does it have cause and effect? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I would say that this, this life, this experience, this happening is more magical than we could ever possibly realize. I mean, what a magnificence. I like to stargaze at night. I look up at the stars. I'm just like, how the hell? I mean, amazing. So I don't rule anything out because I have no idea because, you know, what would I know? What would I know about the magic of the universe? It's already magic enough for me. Beautiful. Um, we have about three minutes left, Lisa. Do you have any closing remarks? Thank you for this beautiful, clear sharing. Okay, let's see. Um, that just, just um, like, I, thought, I like the idea, what someone said earlier about clarity, something being clear. It is already really clear. It's clear you're in a room. It's clear that there's thoughts. It's clear that there's feelings. And this is like the most... This is life being itself, life being itself. There is no other life. There is no other, there's nothing to get right. You can't get it wrong because it's life. You just can't get it wrong. It's already itself. It's, it's, it's like a constant big bang. Sometimes I say that it's like a constant big bang. People say, when does the big bang start? It's like, well, it's here. Like everything's been created simultaneously but we can't get hold of it we can't experience it and we can't know it because we are it there's nowhere to go with it but i don't know that i might be wrong and this is the thing you see it's like don't trust what i say i would say don't believe anybody <laughs> Only you know, only, only this is your universe, this is your world, this, this, is, this is it, this is, the, this is the creation. No matter what it is, it, it can't be right and it can't be wrong. Because as soon as it moves into something else, it's just what it is again. It's impossible to pin it down. I just like singing the song. That's all I like doing. I like to sing the song. But I have nothing to teach and nothing to give because you already are everything. That's ironic that I say that because I'm in the nothing stage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about everything and nothing. I don't use, I don't really use words as definitives. It's, it's more loose. It's more of a kind of, you just got to see what I'm trying to say. And not stick to the, not stick to the definitive words. Because there's no word that encompasses the whole of life, the universe and everything. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's, it's always lovely to see you. Yeah, you we too. Should, we should hang out again. I've been Let's so busy. Sorry. I was thinking that Let's last that. night. I was thinking that last night. I said, I've really got to hang out with Emerson again because I just love your company. Yeah, we should. We should. Yeah. I've, I've just been so busy. So sorry. I know. You've well, been uh, completely hectic. When, when you've oh. done and dusted, you know, this huge event that you've yes. put together. And really congratulations on putting this big event together. I know how much hard work you've done because I have of help. a little birdie who tells me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Julie. <laughs> no, it's been a really just... great achievement. So, yeah, hi, Julie. So congratulations <laughs> on you, the team, you know, Julie and everybody. Uh, it's really awesome work. 
And thank you everybody for uh, spending thank this you. hour with me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Okay. Okay. Lots of love. Bye. 15 minutes.